Hi everybody, this is Michelle Stelling with the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers, NAODS. And this is the second part to the quick pages. So hopefully you've watched part one. This is part two and the final part. Visit us on Facebook and check us out for free webinars. Enjoy. So the second part of this quick page is to go ahead and make it your own and I look at this and I think okay I can put some information in this area I can put some information inside this heart maybe I can put some information in here and my headline is going to just be simply cousins and I think I'm going to try to fill it in with each of these blocks so let's just start with the obvious the easy part first I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here in here I'm just going to go ahead and name all the people who are on in the photo and then over here I'm going to put the date so let's put the date in there first I'm going to get my text tool click one time it's going to go on top of that heart and I'm just going to put in 2013 I could be as specific as the actual day it was but for this I'm just going to be a little bit general now you notice that I don't know what font that is because I can't see my fonts so I'm gonna have to pull this up that's one thing that kind of bugs me about this is you don't have a whole lot of real estate but I pulled that up so that I can see my font list down here at the bottom and I can click inside the font area down here and I can toggle with my uh, arrow keys up and down throughout all the different types of fonts that are in my list. Now you may not have the exact same fonts in the advanced version DVD um, uh, training sessions I show you how to find fonts on the internet and how to load them from the internet and install them so check that out if you are interested in that so I'm just gonna go ahead with something fairly simple I'll just use maybe I don't know sometimes I drive myself crazy with this let's just use this one century that one looks pretty nice and maybe make it a little bit bigger and maybe rotate it just a little bit now that font color isn't really what I want so let's see here do I want to go down in my uh, color down here and pick for my swatches I could do that um, but I don't have enough options in my swatches so a couple more things you can do you can um, click on this little thing right here in the very bottom and that's going to bring up your color picker and then you can switch through all the different hues in here um, or what I like to do more is go ahead into that color picker and then come out into my page see how it turns into this little eyedropper tool and maybe I pull a color from here so see how it's changing up here maybe I bring in this orange nah maybe I bring in this green nah maybe I bring in this lighter um, kind of like a beige color from this ribbon back here that looks pretty good so let's try that and see what it looks like I don't mind it I think that looks pretty good the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in down here I'm going to use my same text tool I'm going to click and drag a text box and then I'm going to type in the names of the people in on this page so Sierra was first and notice here it's doing the same color that it used over here which is totally fine but I can't see it so that's not totally fine so let's bring in a different color I'm just gonna pick something for now for, from now for my for my color swatches and that's a little bit too big so let's go down let's close that out it's not letting me do that for some reason okay so let me go back in highlight that make it a little bit smaller maybe 18 points and uh, Kaylin was next and then I'm gonna hit their enter key and then Sydney okay that should work but we have to kind of finagle with the letting right now it doesn't it doesn't really fit there very well because we want to kind of squeeze up the space in between each line of text so I'm going to go back to my text tool and down here where it says letting I'm going to click and drag it to the left if you click and drag it to the right it makes more space in between there if you click and drag it to the left it'll make less space okay so I'm just gonna eyeball it in there now I don't like that font color so I'm gonna go back to my text tool highlight it then go back to the color go into the color picker and maybe I pull in some of this uh, mauve or whatever you want to call it and see what that looks like and that looks 
decent. That looks okay. So let's double click on the hand tool to kind of zoom in close to make sure I didn't t type anything wrong as far as the spelling goes. Double click on the hand tool and I'll keep it at that. Now my last thing in the bottom right hand corner would be to put Holland, Michigan because uh, that's where it was taken. So let's go back and get our text tool and I'm going to go to the very top layer just so it goes to the top and then type in Holland and this is all going to be capital and that looks like a pretty good size I might make it a little bit smaller and then this is kind of fun go to your text tool over here to the right of that you're going to see what's called create warped text I'm going to go into that and then I'm going to go into arc and I'm going to arc it a lot I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now. Click on OK and then kind of move it into space. That's not arced enough. So let's go back in there, go back into the arch and let's see if we can do it more. And we may have to play around with it a lot. I'm not going to waste your time on trying to get it perfect but we can kind of squeeze it up and try different fonts if we want to. If this doesn't look good, it doesn't look very good, does it? <laughs> Let me try a different font. Let's go back in there. What if we did impact? I know that's one of my, yeah, let's try that. We can see that a little bit better. I'm not so sure about the color, but we can kind of play around. And that's not perfect, but you get the idea. So there's Holland. I think the color is going to be this brown color. I think that would look cool. So let's go ahead and pick out this brown from this ribbon here. Click on OK. Oops, I didn't select it first. Let's select it. There we go. And that looks OK. It's a little heavy. Um, if it's too heavy, you can always click on it and go to the opacity slider and lighten it up just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And if we want to put Michigan on the bottom, what I would do is go ahead and do another layer, click away from it, and I'm just going to type in Michigan, and it's going to go right down there. I'm going to go back to my text tool, go back into the Create Warp, and this time I believe you can go into Arc, and I think you can just push it to the left, yep, and bend it that way. Okay. Click on OK. Go in there and kind of play around with it. Got to squeeze it on up a little bit. Uh, it's not looking that great, but it's OK. And then we can also take that opacity down too, unless you want one to stand out more than the other. Michigan might be kind of cool to stand out since it's the state. Um, you can rotate it a little bit if you need to, kind of mess around to get it to fit perfectly in there. Nudge it with your little arrow keys. And that looks pretty good. So let's double click on the hand tool to pull us back. Now the only thing left is to put the word cousins in there and then we'll save it off. So I'm going to get my text tool again and I'm going to do it all in uppercase. And I'm going to enlarge it because I want it to go across the whole bottom here. I think I'm going to fill it in with each of these squares. Um, another thing I did was I put a space in between each. So let's try, let's try that. Let's try putting a space in between each. Now the one thing about Photoshop Elements 11 or Elements at all is you don't have what's called kerning. And I love kerning. It's the space in between each line of text. So that's kind of a bummer, but that's okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get each letter perfect inside of these blocks and it's not going to work because we can't do the kerning. What we can do is we can put these on separate layers so that they are perfect. Okay, We'll get them as perfect as we can. Like the, the C-O-U, that's not bad and the S not bad. So let's pull it, stretch it just a tad bit more. So those don't look bad. But the I and the N and the S do not look good. So what we're going to do, because I do want them to go inside there. So first of all, I'm going to change it to white. Actually, we could do an off-white, which might look a little bit better. Let's do an off-white. Then it won't be so stark. That looks pretty good, actually. I like it because it's not so stark. And we can put a drop shadow and it'll look really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my um, Cousins layer and just right click and I'm going to duplicate that layer. Okay, now this is a little tricky. So we have two of them, but I have to take them one apart and then I'm going to delete this 
and I'm going to delete on that one, I'm going to delete this. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. And then I'm going to take this one and pull it up here and try to see if I can't do something like add another space in there. Hmm. It's probably not going to work, so I'm just going to have to do what I just did and make another copy. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. And then all I have to do, let's just see what happens if I delete I N R that and then on this one I'm going to have to delete the NS. Sometimes you just have to kind of cheat your way through it I guess. It's not really cheating but now that looks perfect. Okay. Now another thing, maybe a little drop shadow on this wouldn't be so bad. So let's select OUS, go to our effects panel, put a little drop shadow on there. Eh, looks okay. It's a little stark but we could go back to our layers, go into FX, and then take down the opacity just a little bit so it's not so stark. See that? Click on OK. Now I want the exact same opacity and drop shadow on the INS as I do with these. So here's a little cool shortcut command. You right click on OUS, COUS, and choose Copy Layer Style. Then go to the I layer and right click and choose Paste Layer Style. I almost couldn't see it there. And then go to the NS and choose Paste Layer Style. And that will give you the exact same drop shadow, which is really cool. I'm going to double click on the hand tool and we are done with the quick page. Not so bad. So I'm going to go in and say File, Save As. Make sure I got the right name. You could just go File, Save, but I always like to replace things because I'm afraid I'm going to override something. And we've got all the layers here now. It's time to either print it at your house or go ahead and save it as a JPEG and upload it somewhere else or wherever you get, you get your prints done. So you want to do it both ways. You want to do a PSD and a JPEG. The PSDs are going to keep your layers so that you can always go back in there. If you spelled something wrong or whatever, you can go change it. The JPEG when you go File, Save As, and you pick JPEG from your list of drop-downs, it's going to compress that, so it's going to make it a lot smaller, and you have the option to change the quality, so I can take it down to maybe medium or high or whatever. I usually do it at least right around 10 to 11 or 12. Click on OK, and that is going to compress it. So now we've got the PSD, which has all the layers. And if I were to open up the JPEG, which is right here, you're going to see that it's um, almost 4 megabytes, so it's still pretty darn big. So if you wanted to take down the quality, then you might have to do that. And then um, the, J, the PSD is 78 megs <laughs> right down here. You see that? And down here, if you just click on this, you're going to see that it took it down to almost 4 megs. But when you open up that JPEG, look over here to the right, and it's going to be compressed. So that's the second half of the quick page. I hope you enjoyed how to build a quick page part two, and I hope to see you back soon. Bye-bye.